<clears throat> Hello, oh, this is Sobol Stokas speaking from Washington, D.C. Thank, thank you, you very so much, much for reaching out to us. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, and thank you. Uh, it's an honor. My name is Joe Simpron with Global Cleveland, and we would like to thank all of our audience and all of our participants today for joining us to welcome His Excellency Ambassador Stabolts Takash here to Global Cleveland's Forum on the Ambassador and Diplomat Series. We'll be hearing from His Excellency the Ambassador, and then we will have a question and answer session open to all who would like to uh, write a question in the chat that is on your screen. Once the question and answer is enabled, please submit your questions, not statements, uh, and we will get to as many as possible. Additionally, we have with us in the audience two very, very special guests. Mr. Tomasz Kovac, Kovac, Consul General of Hungary and Chicago, and our own Consul General of the Nation of Slovenia, located here in Cleveland, Mrs. Alenka Yerak. We're very honored to have these two fantastic diplomats who are gonna be part of this conversation. I would now like to introduce a very close friend of Global Cleveland and someone known to everyone in Cleveland from the Hungarian community and throughout the international community, Mr. Andre Tsenkali, president of the Hungarian Cleveland United Hungarian Societies. Mr. Tsenkali teaches English and German at Nordonia High School. He is the son of Hungarian refugees, a published author, and very involved in the very important institution of Hungarian scouting here in Northeast Ohio. Andre is not only a leader in the Cleveland Hungarian community, but a Clevelander who staunchly defends and promotes the roles that our newcomer communities have in shaping and enhancing our communities. And let me say, as someone who was born to a mother and father of Slovenian descent, that our community is so much stronger and richer and better because of the Hungarian community that has made their home here in Northeast Ohio for over a century. And part of that community and a leader among us, Mr. Senkarali, I will now turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joe. Uh, the umbrella organization of which I'm the president uh, represents thousands of Cleveland Hungarians. It was founded 120 years ago this September and the statue they erected of the Hungarian champion of liberty, Lajos Kossuth, that statue still stands in University Circle. We count among our members eight Hungarian churches and 14 civic organizations, uh, including the wonderful museum in downtown Cleveland's Galleria Mall, Hungarian Cultural Gardens, as well as the Hungarian American Chamber of Commerce. If you get a chance, uh, check out the website hungariancleveland.org to see the diversity of the Cleveland Hungarian community entails. And let's not forget, of course, Cleveland's sister city relationship with Miskolc and our long history of faith with outstanding cities in Hungary. And because Hungarians love their food, be sure to visit any of the five local Hungarian pastry shops, including Bohad in the Westside Market, Farkas, Lydia's, Murdy's, Rami's, and Pennsylvania Bakers. Some that can truly be blessed here in Cleveland. But now, for the reason we are all here today, Ambassador Kokac, born in Budapest, holds degrees in English language and literature, political science, European studies and law, and international relations. We have a very qualified diplomat with us today. Ambassador Kokac joined the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in 2002 and has served in the Middle East. Southeast Asia and the Pacific, and in numerous roles within Europe, including Ministerial Commissioner for Brexit, Secretary for European Union Affairs, and since November 2020, we are happy to have him as Chief of Mission at the Embassy of Hungary in Washington in the U.S. Ambassador Kokach is both broad and deep experience in global policy and state-state relationships cannot be overstated. The U.S. and all of us here in Cleveland are looking forward to hearing more about the Hungarian-American relationship and what the embassy's goals are under Mr. Kokach's tenure. It is with pleasure and honor that I introduce his honor, Excellency Ambassador Sabolc Kokach. Thank you very much, uh, dear Andre, and uh, thank you, Global Cleveland, for reaching out to me in the first place. Uh, I, I was really happy to, to have been informed about the opportunity to address uh, the audience uh, whom I, I greet. Uh, uh, thoroughly, and especially my fine colleagues, the Consul General from uh, Chicago, Tomasz Kovac, and the Consul General of Slovenia uh, in Cleveland. I'm very happy to join, it's an honor to me. Uh, you know, when Hungarians hear the, uh, the word Cleveland and hear about the city of Cleveland, they immediately associate that uh, with the largest and most sizable uh, Hungarian community living in the United States of America. So. 
Cleveland is a, a very well-known name back in my country in Hungary uh, for a good reason. And Andrea just pointed out that uh, the Hungarian umbrella organization in Cleveland was founded 120 years ago. Uh, it means that uh, Hungarians already lived in Cleveland 120 years ago, uh, just as much as Hungarians have uh, contributed to what we call the United States of America uh, from the very early days. And this is one of the uh, one of the things that we admire in the United States, that this is so colorful and uh, it's very diverse. Uh, the ethnic diversity and the cultural diversity that brought this country to life uh, is certainly honored and amazed and respected all over the world. Uh, now, as we speak, of course, uh, we are very close allies as well, uh, not only partners, but close allies. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, that later. But first of all, uh, just as Andrea uh, addressed me, to talk about uh, my ambitions uh, during my tenure, how to uh, identify uh, the interests of Hungarian-American relationship. I think I have to start a bit earlier. First of all, it's a great honor, of course, for any diplomat to, to represent her or his country in the US, as uh, the US is one of the uh, most uh, powerful, influential uh, global player. Uh, and the uh, US contribution to what we call global human development is certainly immense. Uh, and we Hungarians uh, would like to be uh, a part of this story. Uh, I represent a country which is a very old country. Uh, we have a history of over 1,100 years old. So there are centuries on which we can build. Uh, and uh, I think we have the lessons that we learn from our history. Uh, and certainly, this is what I would like to bring uh, to America as well. First of all, my goal and my ambition is to familiarize uh, not only the political elite in the US, but uh, ordinary people all over the place, uh, who we are and uh, what we represent, uh, what is the added value of the Hungarian community, uh, which is a community back in my country, but also it's a, it's a global community, as uh, we have Hungarians all over the world. Our history has been just as turbulent as the history of many other countries in the 20th century. And even before the 19th century and the 20th century uh, drove uh, hundreds of thousands, millions of Hungarians from the homeland, sometimes not because they wanted to, but because history just changed them away. And certainly there were bad times and there were better times uh, in our history, but we are very grateful for the USA also to give home uh, to many Hungarians all over uh, that 19th and 20th century, most recently, uh, 65 years ago, 66 years ago, when in 1956, the uh, Hungarians uh, revolted against a, uh, the grip of the Soviet dictatorship and the revolution that uh, started in the streets of Budapest in 1956. Uh, we believe and we are convinced uh, that it has had a, a global impact. Uh, 200,000 Hungarians uh, had to leave the country and 80,000 of them found a new home in the USA. Uh, like uh, uh, the parents of Andrea, you just mentioned in your introduction and many others uh, are uh, descendants of Hungarian refugees who, who had to leave their uh, motherland. Uh, I believe that they have had a strong influence on Hungarian US relationship, even during the communist years until the end of 1980s, early 1990, when Hungary had the chance once again in our history to get back our freedom and independence and the free will to decide on uh, which path uh, we would like to, to move along. Uh, now it's 100 years uh, since we have uh, official diplomatic ties with the USA, uh, subsequent to the end of the First World War in 1921, uh, that time Hungarian leadership decided to reach out, just like many other European countries after the First World War, to establish formal ties. But Hungarians had arrived much earlier. Uh, we just referred to the Cleveland Hungarian organization 120 years ago. But even during the War of Independence, there were Hungarians who took part in the struggle, in the American struggle to become independent and free. Uh, some of them uh, are uh, still cherished and honored by different organizations um, like uh, Mihai Kovács, the Fabrici, who is one of the most influential uh, that time Hungarian, uh, who together with uh, 
uh, also very well known Polish Pulaski uh, participated in uh, many uh, important struggles for American independence and freedom. And, but also later on during the Civil War, there were many Hungarians who participated in the Civil War uh, uh, fightings. And at the time, and this is a quite a little known fact, that uh, in the mid 19th century, there were about 8,000 known Hungarians who lived in the United States. And out of that 8,000 Hungarians, 400 participated in the Civil War. Uh, and that's 20%. Uh, and I think the Hungarians, by uh, the percentage, they were the most represented ethnic community in the Civil War at the time. Of course, there were other communities which were much sizable, but compared to the size of the Hungarians, they were very much part of uh, American history. And later on, uh, when the Hungarians arrived in the Midwest area, in Illinois and Ohio, the place where you live, uh, they have contributed to what you call Cleveland to, today. And I know that there are many uh, European communities in Cleveland together with the Hungarians, but I believe that uh, the Hungarians certainly had a very strong and very uh, positive uh, earmark and, and, and impact on, on, on your city and on, on your region. Uh, and we would like to keep this legacy alive. We would like to support, uh, first of all, Hungarian life, Hungarian identity in the USA with all kinds of programs. We have official programs for scholarships for uh, young Hungarians uh, who have any ancestors who come from, from Hungary. Uh, but there are other different uh, cultural and uh, uh, educational programs uh, through which we would like to uh, not only maintain the bridge, but uh, develop the bridge between our two countries. Hungary has been enjoying freedom and independence uh, in our most uh, recent modern history only 30 years ago. It's a small period of time if you look at uh, history, but I think it has changed the country significantly. First of all, the Hungarians who managed to uh, shake off the, the Soviet grip and they opened our borders in 1989, and this was the first uh, uh, step uh, which led to the unification of Germany and the unification of Europe, the European continent. So after 50 years of uh, Soviet communism, we had another chance in history to, uh, to shape our own fate and our future based on the will of the Hungarian people. And the majority, the vast majority of the Hungarian people are pro-Western because we believe that uh, Hungarians all, all through our history, all through the centuries, contributed very much to what we call Europe today in uh, cultural terms, in social terms, in economic terms, uh, scientists, uh, scholars, politicians, uh, whoever, they are as much European as anybody else in Europe. And that's also a very nice thing about the European continent that there is a, a, a cultural diversity and we can see that there's a unity uh, through diversity. And this is what we would like to keep alive because we believe that uh, there are different nations, different languages in the European continent. And this is what makes Europe very rich, uh, and very diverse and, and very powerful. So this is the, uh, the motto of the Hungarian government that we, we have to keep uh, to this unity uh, through keeping our diverse cultures and traditions. But there is something that we call Europeanness. And I believe that there are many, many more things that unite different European nations and they divide. Uh, and this is uh, the European Union that we also believe in. We joined the EU in 2004. So it has been some time since we are a member of the European Union. And we would like to contribute to the uh, viability, to the competitiveness of the European Union, uh, because it has a strong responsibility globally uh, to make the world a better place. Uh, while we can see that there are huge challenges all over and uh, the history is always very challenging. And our most modern history, the times that we live in, are uh, not less challenging than any other period before that. Uh, only if you look at the imminent neighborhood of the European Union, there are always uh, uh, very serious risks of, uh, of security problems. Most recently, of course, that all the news are about these days is the Russia-Ukraine crisis, which has uh, a bit stirred up again, and there is a growing tension. We do hope that through dialogue and through diplomatic means, eventually all the stakeholders, including the EU, including Hungary and others, will come to a conclusion that will be, bring peace and development and stability uh, to Ukraine and uh, also to Russia. Uh, but if you look at the, the southern neighborhood, 
uh, our Romanian neighborhood in the Western Balkans, which has a strong legacy after the war in Yugoslavia about 20 years ago. Uh, still, the wounds have not healed, and uh, the people in the in the region deserve a better life, and that's why we are uh, very much adamant on helping them, helping them to join the European Union, join this uh, Western alliance that we believe they also belong to. But if you go further south to the Middle East, North Africa, the region has always been turbulent. Uh, and it, if, if there is instability uh, in the Middle East, uh, in Israel or in the, in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict or in Afghanistan, in, in South Asia, it has a direct impact on Europe and our, our life, our uh, presence and our future. So Hungary would like to be part of all these global endeavors to bring uh, stability and peace to the world. We are a member of NATO since 1999, so for over 20 years, we have been working with the United States also as uh, NATO allies. We were in Afghanistan with the US from day one until the last day, and we were part of the withdrawal. Uh, we, of course, are very much aware uh, that it has uh, caused a lot of controversies, the way that uh, NATO and the US left Afghanistan, but we, we believe that after 20 years, uh, the conflict uh, had to be resolved uh, one way or the other, but once again, uh, the region is not stable, and this causes a lot of concern, a lot of headaches to us. But uh, you can rest assured that Hungary is a very strong and very loyal and very reliable partner for the USA, just as much the USA is a very reliable partner to us. And we believe that uh, we have to use this historic opportunity that through the transatlantic cooperation and through a renewed NATO, which is going through a strategic uh, revision, uh, we have to uh, contribute to, to stability and peace all over the world. Uh, so these are ambitions that, uh, that are strong and that we can uh, build on. Apart from uh, the fact that also the US economy, which is struggling sometimes because of COVID, because of the pandemic, because of the, uh, the global economic challenges, just, just as much as the European economy is also struggling a bit. Uh, but we believe that we are still uh, the strong and most powerful economic players of the world. And the uh, United States contributes a lot uh, to the economic development of my country, creating a lot of jobs for uh, average Hungarian families that we greatly appreciate. And we can be really satisfied with the, with the amount and with the, uh, the quality uh, of, uh, of uh, American uh, business and investment presence in, in Hungary. There are 1,700 American companies that are present in Hungary. Out of the 50 largest US companies, 40 are there in one way or the other. And after Germany, the United States of America is the second largest investor uh, to Hungary. Uh, American companies are giving jobs to over 105,000 Hungarians, which certainly matters a lot in their everyday life. And that's why the, the government of Hungary looks at the US economic presence uh, with a lot of appreciation and we try to be a, a good partner, a, a very pro-business government. And from our experiences, we see that American companies are happy and uh, feel good in Hungary. And this is what at the end of the day uh, is the most important uh, because this is what uh, uh, gives bread to people. Uh, and this is the task of the politicians and diplomats to create all the framework, the political framework, the legal framework, the business framework to further cherish and develop this cooperation. Um, in, in the USA, there are 1.5 million people who has some Hungarian ancestry. Uh, they are all over the place, not only in Midwest. Uh, there are many Hungarians living in California, uh, also in, in Florida, in the East Coast, in, in the South. Uh, uh, and we have Hungarians all over the place, uh, around the New York area, New Jersey. And that's a huge country. And of course, we, we cannot manage that alone. That's why I'm very grateful for my colleagues, uh, Hungarian consul generals, not only in Chicago, but also in Los Angeles and in New York. But we have Hungarian diplomatic presence in Houston, in Miami, in San Francisco. So we try to cover the whole country and try to uh, bring a message to Hungarian Americans that our doors are always open for them if they want to liaise with the country of their mothers and fathers and, uh, and grandparents. Uh, because we believe that we both need each other. Uh, what we call Hungarian culture uh, is something that we would like to preserve. And that's why we have to carry out a policy in all areas of life, which uh, strengthens this uh, value and uh, which uh, strengthens the Hungarian traditions in 
every way and uh, in every sense. Sometimes it causes a lot of political uh, debates for us because the challenges, as I already mentioned, are manifold. And one of the biggest challenges of our modern time, and I think this will be with us for many, many years, uh, is the uh, global migration of people. Because what we experience, what we see is, if I want to simplify things, is that the Southern Hemisphere is moving to the Northern Hemisphere, uh, not only from Africa and Asia to Europe, but also from Latin America to North America. And there's a reason for that, obviously. Uh, demographic boom in the South, climate change, which uh, is uh, making uh, uh, the land less and less livable in many places, in Africa, in the Middle East, but also elsewhere. And of course, the many security crises, uh, which are chasing people away because they belong to an ethnic group or they belong to a religion. And certainly we cannot afford that and we cannot tolerate that. So we, what we need to do is we need to help the South to uh, create stability uh, and livable countries and livable places in order to keep the people where they are born uh, because it simply cannot happen that the southern hemisphere is moving to the northern hemisphere uh, because it has certain dire consequences. Uh, the global immigration problem is a, a problem that needs global cooperation. Uh, that's what we are doing in the European Union. That's what we are doing in the UN context. But this is, I think, one of the biggest challenges of our modern times. And certainly it causes a lot of uh, social uh, tension and political problems also in this country, in the USA. We are very much aware of the situation at the southern border of the United States of America. But we ambassadors are not here to comment and uh, to uh, just you know uh, uh, in, infiltrate into domestic political issues. We are here to assess the situation. Uh, and then try to uh, make bridges and create bridges and create a dialogue. That's what I'm trying to do together with my colleagues. And in this endeavor, the Hungarian Americans who has uh, a strong experience of uh, being also American, not only Hungarian, are a great asset and a great help to us. And that's why I believe that your endeavor to make uh, your place Cleveland and the, the county around Cleveland and uh, the state uh, a very, uh, international uh, uh, place is uh, certainly a, an excellent idea, an excellent endeavor. I know that your organization has been operational and active on that for all, more than one decade. You can rest assured that the Hungarians living in Cleveland, as much as our diplo diplomatic representations all over the place, will always be a, a, a partner for, uh, for you in that. So maybe I think this is where I will stop. Uh, there might be a couple of questions to me and I'm more than happy to answer any. So please feel free to reach out to me with questions. And, and once again, I'm, I'm very grateful that we can talk and we can have this discussion. Thank you very much, Ambassador. That was a, that was a wonderful lecture that you just gave and many points that I think will be brought up in the question and answer section. So I'll start off with our first question here. Okay, Ambassador. The tensions between the US and Russia are high over Ukraine. Hungary has played a historical role in diplomacy over the years. How do you think this situation can be resolved peacefully? Well, first of all, uh, we Europeans are always very much concerned if there's a tension between uh, Russia and the USA because it has never brought any good to Europe. And that's why we need a very strong and uh, very comprehensive dialogue and a very transparent dialogue within our alliance, within the transatlantic community, NATO or uh, EU-US uh, cooperation. And we believe that we uh, together can create a situation that will uh, deter Russia also from actions that nobody would like to see. Uh, we believe that uh, uh, the area around Russia is certainly has always been an, an important uh, area for them because this is their area of influence. And if we want to reach a peaceful uh, and uh, sustainable solution that we really must engage in a very sincere and very open talk with the Russians, the US government has been doing that for the last many weeks and months. Uh, major uh, European uh, countries like Germany and France uh, have also reached out to, to the Russian leadership 
uh, in order to identify what exactly their goal is. But I believe what is certainly not affordable and, and not tolerable if anyone uh, breaches international law. So the annexation of territories of another country has never brought peace and stability for the people who live there. So first of all, we have to avoid a situation where there would be a repetition of the annexation of the Crimea uh, about 10 years ago. So we do hope that uh, through this very intensive diplomatic uh, talks, but also a preparedness to deter Russia from uh, further actions, be it economic sanctions or a military buildup, uh, hopefully will bring uh, its results. Everybody would like to avoid uh, a uh, military uh, conflict between Russia and whoever. Uh, so the only option is a diplomatic option, we believe. Uh, the world is too complex and too difficult in order to afford another major security conflict. And uh, we are negotiating very intensively in Brussels with our European Union partners and also with NATO partners. And uh, we have a bilateral uh, defense cooperation agreement with the USA as well that we just signed in 2019. And uh, within the context of this, we are trying to find ways and means how Hungary can contribute uh, to the peaceful resolution of the crisis. We do hope that everybody will come to uh, her senses. And at the end of the day, uh, we will see the, the end of this uh, tension because it has been growing for too long. And we do, do hope that uh, eventually it will not uh, result in a more serious outcome. Thank you very much for that thoughtful response. Um, the second question is, Ambassador, the Hungarian community in Cleveland is strong and large. Will you come to Cleveland soon so that we can celebrate with you the Hungarian spirit that lives on in our cities in Northeast Ohio? Well, first of all, let me also use this opportunity to express my uh, profound gratitude to the Hungarians living in Cleveland. They have been very generous since the, the day I arrived, which was in uh, November 2020. But certainly I, I arrived in the USA to do my diplomatic mission in an extremely difficult uh, uh, time because of the global pandemic situation that is far from being over, unfortunately, as we see. Uh, it has been with us for over 100, uh, I mean, one and a half years. And uh, with new strains of the virus, we are still having a lot of question marks, a lot of challenges. I know that the Hungarians had to postpone many uh, events, uh, cultural events, uh, different uh, gala dinners and balls uh, that has uh, shaped the Hungarian life for uh, over a century. And that's really regrettable and it's very sorrowful and very sad. Uh, but I do hope that uh, as we are trying to uh, somehow struggle out of this crisis of the health uh, pandemic, uh, there will be opportunities when I can visit uh, Cleveland uh, there will be happy days and happy events. Uh, so I do hope that uh, maybe the second part of this year will uh, bring us uh, to that, uh, that moment as well. Thank you. And of course, you are most welcome. We would be delighted if you were to, able to visit. So our next question is, international economic development is ever more important, especially as the pandemic continues to rage. What are some steps we could take in Cleveland and Northeast Ohio to encourage more transatlantic development? Well, uh, first of all, thank you for the question. As I, I told you, the economic cooperation uh, and uh, uh, investments are certainly tools that, uh, that usually bring uh, development. And uh, not only economic development, but also development for the people, uh, a, a, a strong and, 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 and stable, stable workplace, a stable job, and that's, I think that, that's what is most important for a person. Uh, if we want, he wants to live a good life and uh, raise a family. And that's why we would like to create a business environment that is lucrative enough, that is competitive. And there are some important uh, elements of the Hungarian fiscal policy, taxation policy, and economic policy that we believe that uh, is attractive to, to for inv in investors. Talking about taxation, and uh, just yesterday I had a talk with uh, some uh, colleagues here in the US, uh, different ambassadors and one of the think tanks uh, in Washington, DC, and somebody talked about Texas law and Texas taxation, a person who just came to DC from Texas. And uh, of course the 
taxation regime in Texas is something that is uh, has uh, certainly gained a lot of interest and attention, uh, not only in the US, but all over. And I reflected that, yes, we believe that if there is a fair and uh, decent taxation regime, that is good for the companies, that is good for the businesses, and eventually that is good for the people. Uh, we Hungarians, we have a taxation policy, uh, which is very lucrative and very attractive. We have the lowest level of corporate tax all over the European Union out of the 27 countries, which is 9%. And certainly that's a great uh, asset. And it's a, it's a magnet that brings companies there because they have to pay less tax. Uh, of course, uh, in return, what we expect is a decent and stable and maintainable presence. Uh, and we are trying to create a, a, a legal environment that is reliable and that is uh, trustable. And you know the numbers uh, speak for themselves because it's not only the US companies, but other major economies that are present in Hungary. We are located in the center of Europe. Infrastructure-wise, we are very well developed, the motorways all around the country. And if you come to Hungary, uh, you don't only come to a 10 million strong Hungarian market, but you become part of a 480 million European single market where you don't pay customs, you don't pay duties. Uh, you can create something, you can manufacture something, and then you can sell it in the market. So I believe that uh, the economic uh, policy is also, uh, or even during the COVID times, has uh, certainly convinced the foreign investors that that's a good place to come to. Uh, and another figure, which is very important, uh, it was the US companies that created the most jobs since the outbreak of the pandemic in Hungary. 25% of all jobs created by foreign investors why, were created by American companies. And that's an asset that we very much cherish and for which we are grateful. But I think it's a mutually beneficial cooperation. So this is what we would like to, to build on. And we look forward to having companies from all over the the US. Uh, and that's our message also to the Ohio and Cleveland companies that they should come, they should see it with their own eyes, and they should reach out to our diplomatic representations. We have colleagues who are working for the economic cooperation, attaches uh, who are working on trade and investments, and they are always uh, ready uh, to provide all the requested information. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Our next question is, um, could you please provide information about the upcoming elections in Hungary? Those Hungarians living in the diaspora now, can they register? And is this a question for the consul generals? Can they, is the information, can you find it on the embassy's website or on the consul general's website? Yeah, that's right. Thank you very much for the question. And certainly uh, that's uh, one of the most significant political events uh, in the upcoming months in Hungary. The president of the Hungary officially announced recently that the general elections will be held on the 3rd of April uh, 2022. So we have about 70 days until the uh, elections in Hungary. And let me use this opportunity to tell you that uh, uh, since 1990, Hungarians uh, organize uh, general elections every four years. And probably we are the only country in Europe that never needed an early election. Uh, in, your, in the European Union countries, there are different political systems. Uh, of course, they are all democracies, but the electoral system differ from country to country. Uh, but what we believe is a, is a strong asset is that Hungarians truly believe in democracy. And I'm not talking about the political elite only, of course. Uh, uh, we who live in democracy and who formulate our political life in a, in a, in a democracy, we have to be very committed to all uh, characters and all institutions of democracy, but it is only the, also the people. If they elect someone, uh, they give legitimacy to a given government for four years. And there have been changes of governments, obviously, uh, since 1990, but we've never needed early election. And that's another strong uh, signal that uh, the democratic ideal of the Hungarian people is very strong. And uh, they believe in that. And uh, this is what gives us hope and calmness uh, about the future of our country. Now, those Hungarians who have Hungarian citizenship can certainly let, register to vote uh, in, a, in a very uh, soon coming days and weeks. Uh, uh, our diplomatic missions will uh, uh, announce uh, all the rules and details on the websites. Uh, 
they will have to register to vote and they can also cast uh, their vote through a postal means that so they can send a, a, a letter and their ballot can be sent to the diplomatic missions or directly back to Budapest to the central uh, agency that is organizing the elections. Uh, so we much look for, forward to a high representation because I believe that the more people vote, the stronger the legitimacy and the democratic uh, foundation of the of the new government. Great, thank you very much. And on that note, being a democracy that is 30 years old, what do you have to share with us Americans whose democracy is older, but often our participation levels aren't as high in terms of why it's important to participate in your representative democracy? Well, I think Andre uh, uh, Senkirai in his opening remarks also, he already referred to the champion of Hungarian liberty, Lajos Kossuth, who paid a visit to the USA in 1851-52. And uh, the Hungarians uh, were already fighting for democracy in the mid 19th century. We had the revolution if, uh, of 1848 and then the war of independence that we lost. And then we have to succumb back again uh, to a, a new system. And then the Hungarian Austria, also Hungarian monarchy was formed and then the two world wars. So it's true that uh, in our most recent uh, history, Hungary has uh, enjoyed uh, democracy only for 30 years, but the democratic thinking and the democratic struggle started much earlier. And I believe that our experience is that uh, if uh, more people participate uh, at the elections, then the stronger the legitimacy of the, of the elected uh, body, the elected government uh, is. And that's why it's important that uh, people turn up. They have a chance to cast their ballots and uh, tell their opinion how much they are satisfied with things going on in their own country only in every three or four or five years. So we certainly encourage people to, to take, the, take the chance and, and register and cast their ballot. Uh, I think that's the, that that's, uh, serves the, uh, the goal of the whole community. Thank you. The next question is, you mentioned opportunities such as scholarships for young people of Hungarian descent. Where can we find more information about concrete ways in which Americans can um, travel to Hungary through programs such as this so that we can promote those opportunities? Of course, there are different uh, universities in Hungary uh, that are offering all kinds of uh, international uh, programs in, in every field of uh, education, engineering and uh, medical studies, veterinary studies and uh, international studies. Uh, all kinds of studies and we have uh, uh, Hungarian universities with a very strong and very powerful uh, history and tradition. The second largest university uh, in Europe was founded in Hungary in the 14th century in 1367, I think in, in the city of Pech, the second largest, I mean, the second oldest, I'm sorry, after Bologna in, in Italy. So we have traditions on that. Uh, they themselves advertise that on their websites. Uh, if you go, and you Google the Hungarian universities, you can easily reach their website. They themselves offer that. And there are different uh, government supported educational agencies that are promoting uh, educational opportunities all over the place. And also, of course, the Hungarian missions, the embassy here in DC, the consulate general's website offer that. And we are trying to send out uh, the information on uh, any new opportunities. Uh, to the Hungarian organizations that are registered. And there are hundreds of Hungarian organizations, smaller or larger. And if you visit their website, if you reach out to the leadership of these uh, organizations, then they can also inform the, uh, those who are interested about the opportunities. <clears throat> Thank you. The next question is about Page and about Mishkolk. As uh, Andra mentioned, we have a sister city in Mishkolk, and we have a relationship with the University of Page through some of the organizations here in Northeast Ohio and with Ohio University in Southern Ohio. What is your experience with these two cities? You mean Mishkolk and Page? Yes. Uh, well, I don't know Mishkolk that much uh, because I grew up uh, in the Southern part of Hungary. I went to the University of Page myself, so uh, I can certainly, we comment that, uh, and this is my mother 
wonderful institution and I thoroughly enjoyed my studies there. But Miskolc also offers a variety of studies from legal studies, medical, uh, engineering, uh, mining, whatever. Uh, and I believe that uh, they are uh, safe places, they are livable places uh, where they, the lifestyle and the standard of living is high. Uh, there are many, many uh, foreigners who study at these universities, over 40, 50 different uh, ethnic groups who come from all over the place. And uh, again, their experience speak for them uh, themselves. Uh, what I, I certainly want to encourage as an ambassador, officially through my duty, but also as a private person, uh, to take the chance to come to Hungary. Traveling is certainly a bit more difficult these days because of the pandemic, but the regime, uh, I mean, the vaccination regime, uh, be, we believe uh, give you a security to come and, uh, and experience the country yourself. So this is what I encourage people to go. And if you are a, a person of the age of a young student, then certainly it's a great experience to, to come to this part of Europe, to come to Central Europe, come to Hungary, and then uh, just uh, enjoy a lifestyle that is certainly, I think, uh, very enjoyable. Well, we all hope, uh, I think, to, to visit, uh, for those of us who have not been, definitely would love to visit. And I will say the um, city administration in Mishkolk has been wonderfully responsive to Global Cleveland and our outreach and sister cities work over the last three years. So we are hoping um, that if it is safe, that they will be able to come in person to our conference this fall. So we're looking forward to meeting um, our wonderful partners in Mishkolk. Uh, also, there's been a question about Brexit. Uh, as far as I understand it, you were a commissioner for Brexit, ministerial commissioner for Brexit, and you talked several times about the unity of Europe and the power of having um, an economic zone of the European Union and a, and a free market and um, free freedom of movement within, within the Union. So how has Brexit affected Hungary and Hungarians throughout, uh, throughout Europe and, and in uh, Britain itself? Well, uh, yes, certainly. I was uh, in charge of uh, the impacts of Brexit on the Hungarian economy and also from the political aspects, what it will bring. So first of all, I don't need to introduce uh, the United Kingdom to you because the UK has been part of the American history. And of course, uh, the UK has been the uh, global power and I believe it's still a global power because uh, the United Kingdom has interests all over the world from uh, South America to Northeast Asia, and they are also capable of defending their interests. And in this sense, I think the UK is as much a global partner uh, or a global player and a, a global power uh, as the United States of America. And it's no wonder that with this very strong Anglo-Saxon partnership uh, is uh, once again very much alive. Now, that's why it was a uh, uh, extremely important political and economic development that in the mid 1970s, at that time, uh, British leadership decided to join the European Union, which was remarkable because the UK has always identified herself as a as an island, which is uh, in fact it is an island, and it's not part of the continent, not part of the European continent, but culturally, uh, and of course uh, this is very much Europe. And uh, what our British friends uh, keep saying that they have left the European Union as an institution, as an organization, but not uh, Europe as a continent. Uh, of course, the reasons for Brexit uh, are manifold, and uh, I don't think we have enough time to analyze that in depth. But certainly, many British people have not felt comfortable uh, in a European Union that was developing into a direction that they will not uh, very much support it to. And uh, it has a lot to do with, uh, with sovereignty, how you look at your, your own uh, decisions. And we have seen, and this is uh, regretfully that we have also been experiencing in, in Budapest, that the European Union bureaucratic elite in Brussels would like to take away more and more competencies from the member states of the European Union and from the people of the European Union. And this has been one of the reasons why eventually the British decided to organize a referendum on membership, which eventually resulted in, a, in an outcome that many people had, uh, not many people had expected. And uh, since then, there has been a constitutional crisis. 
uh, negotiations started between the European Union and uh, London on uh, on the different uh, uh, legal and economic terms and uh, ways and means how they can withdraw from the European Union. It has been resolved, but there are still uh, challenges and problems that are looming over the horizon, especially the future status of Northern Ireland, which is a part of the United Kingdom, but also it has a lot of strong social, economic and other connections to the Republic of Ireland. And this causes still, as we speak, uh, many political uh, challenges and headaches for many all over Europe. Now, we were regretful that they left uh, the EU because uh, the British political approach to how the European Union should function uh, has always been very uh, close to the Hungarian way of thinking, at least from this Hungarian government. And we lost a strong partner you know, on how to reform the European Union uh, political and legal procedures in order to satisfy a growing number of people. At the same time, the majority of the Hungarians, over 75% of the Hungarians, are very much supportive to our EU membership. So this is no question that Hungary would like to remain to be a strong uh, member state of the EU, but we would like to be part also of the modernization or the reform of the European Union, uh, which should please uh, a larger uh, number of people all over the continent. So Brexit eventually was bad news for us, but we would like to create and keep a good cooperation with the UK. And we are working with them bilaterally and also through our Central European Regional Group, the Visegrad 4, how we can find ways and means to, uh, to formulate our future cooperation with, uh, with the British. Great, thank you. And we uh, often work with um, the British um, you know, community here and with the ambassador and diplomat corps also. Um, so we've had many conversations about Brexit from every angle. So we appreciate your perspective also. The next question is about a Hungary, Hungarian US future cooperation and joint projects. What is on the horizon? Well, as I told you, uh, there are different pillars of Hungarian US cooperation. I talked a lot about the economic and investment ties and while we would like to bring further American investments to Hungary and create a wider trade cooperation, the US is our, our largest uh, trading partner outside the European Union. So again, the numbers uh, speak for themselves. And we would like to also encourage Hungarian companies to come to the US market, which is a very competitive market, but if they have uh, a good product and a good service that is uh, competitive, then we would like to help them to familiarize them with the U.S. business environment, how to do business in the, in the U.S., what is the fiscal environment, the, the legal environment, and uh, we would like to further increase the, uh, the figures of our economic cooperation. This is one thing. Security uh, is another uh, area where we have uh, an agenda. We would like to work together with the U.S. to stabilize uh, conflict zones in the world, in the Western Balkans especially, our imminent neighborhood, but also in North Africa, the Middle East. And uh, we will also participate uh, in, a, in a joint EU-Russia, I mean, uh, EU-US mission in Africa, in Mali. Uh, Hungarian uh, uh, personnel will be part of the mission to stabilize the country and stabilize the region. So defense cooperation is another strong pillar. And just most recently, uh, I can inform you about a very interesting development that a the Hungarian government uh, signed a, a uh, cooperation uh, uh, document on, uh, on the space research, and we would like to train a Hungarian astronaut uh, through a Texas-based uh, American uh, company uh, to make her or him, uh, the person is not chosen yet, uh, to be part of a mission to the International Space Station to conduct research that uh, certainly would be very helpful for our economic development in the future. So space cooperation is another very promising new vista of US-Hungarian cooperation, along with the traditional uh, areas of, uh, of partnership. Thank you. And I will offer, um, we work very closely with trade missions and if there were interest in having mm -hmm. um, um, some information on the Cleveland business environment for Hungarian companies, we would be 
more than willing and happy to put together a program such as that for interested companies. And then also we do have a NASA um, space station here in Cleveland. So we work, we have a, a NASA base um, just by the, on the west side of Cleveland. Um, that is a wonderful opportunity for research in um, different, different fields as well. So that's a, another wonderful reason to come visit Cleveland. <laughs> um, so I don't, I don't think we have any further questions unless anybody wants to put something quickly in the, um, in the chat or in the question and answer. I will say thank you so very much, Ambassador. It was an absolute pleasure to hear from you and to work with your office on this and to uh, you know, hopefully look forward to many more meetings in person and over this wonderful platform that we have. First of all, uh, thank you very much for your interest and uh, everybody who is uh, part of this audience who are listening, uh, I greatly appreciate. I'm sending my best regards uh, to you. Uh, to the Hungarian community and organizations in Cleveland, but also to, to the city of Cleveland and people who live there, and also to your organization, Global, Global Cleveland. I wish you well in your endeavors, and I, I do hope that uh, the next time when I will have the chance and opportunity to visit your wonderful city, I would like to reach out to you and uh, continue this uh, discussion. Thank you for your interest, and uh, I once again wish you a lot of success uh, in, your, in your work. Thank you so much. And if any if anyone has any other questions that were not addressed, you can always email us at globalclevelandinfo at globalcleveland.org and we'll be able to get that answered. We appreciate all of you uh, very much. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye to you. Thanks.